won the right to rest peacefully in Texas water. Howdy and hello, I'm Travis Davis, Vice President of Ship Operations, Battleship Texas Foundation. And I'm here today to give you the straight dope in our latest update. So, since our last update way back in September, a few things have happened. One, well, at the end of September, all of our staff went to Mobile, Alabama to the Historic Naval Ships Association Conference. HINSA is a professional organization for folks who run, well, historic naval ships. So we got to meet a lot of our peers who we haven't met before, friends we've met in the past and reconnected those friendships, learned a few things, and, well, we presented on the ship. But we didn't present anything that you folks don't know already by watching this YouTube channel. Now, I want to give a shout out to the folks at Battleship Alabama. They did a fantastic job hosting that conference. You know, if you get a chance, look up their YouTube channel. It's a great channel. It has great content. It just doesn't get the love it deserves, and it deserves some love, man. Now, outside of going and having fun at a conference and learning a few things, oh, neat thing we got to see at the conference, we got to see the dry dock that picked up Battleship Texas in 1988. It was there in Mobile. It's at Alabama Shipyard. Other things that have been happening in the background is since August, we've been working with a local company to have the ship's gun bloomers, the bloomers that go on the 14-inch guns, redone. Those have been reinstalled over the past few weeks, and they look fantastic. And as far as another kind of major update, stick around to the end. We're going to signal you a new update that you don't want to miss. In our last update, we talked about the four 20 millimeter gun mounts that we completed the restoration of back in August. Well, since then, the crew's been hard at work restoring the last 420s. In fact, this week, today, the, those, the four guns that go on these mounts went through parkerization. So starting tomorrow and over the next few days, those mounts will be, um, be reassembled and then the mounts themselves, or sorry, the guns will be reassembled and the mounts will be reassembled shortly thereafter. And then the gun will go on the mount and the mounts will go outside and be, be covered in heat shrink wrap, which will protect them from the elements while they wait for the ship to be ready to receive them because they're going to go back on the ship and they're gonna go back on the ship in the shipyard. So that is going on. It's, it's been really great to see this happen. And to give you an idea how long it takes for the magic to happen here, for each gun to be, each mount to be stripped down, each gun to be stripped down, from the time we take, start taking components off a mount and sandblast the mount and prime the mount and paint the mount, to take the gun, strip it all the way down to its base components, to put it through a vapor rust, through electrolysis, whatever sandblasting and then, um, I should say bee blasting because we use a much more delicate blast on those things than we do these things because they're much more delicate objects. Anyways, to put them through all that stuff, then parkerizing, then put everything back together and then, you know, final touch up paints. It's about 250 hours per mount. So the guys have done a heck of a job over the last, over the last six weeks or so dumping in about a thousand hours into these four mounts. So, uh, They've done a heck of a job. And they've been doing it with suffering through, well, what a lot of us is suffering through, which is, well, we're running out of materials. Uh, the, the global supply chain uh, restriction, slowdown, whatever you want to call it, is starting to affect us as well. If you look before me right here, you have a nice row of painted hardware, except for some that aren't painted right over here. And these nice uh, shield brackets here for the shields right here. Well, those shields anyways. Um, so we're running out of paint. We're running out of top coat. Primer we can get all day long, but our top coat, which is PSX 1001, and it's a poly polysiloxane paint, it's a very, very good paint. Uh, we can't say enough about it. A lot of other ships use it. PPG, who makes it, has, has been unable to get the, um, the raw materials to make that top coat. So that's been affecting us. And we've had to scrounge and beg and borrow to get what we can to, to kind of finish this out. But we will get them finished out. So in the meantime, while we're dealing with this, um, and the guys have been putting all this, putting these, working on these 420s, um, our volunteers 
the, particularly the Wednesday gang. So that's a group of our volunteers that come every Wednesday to, to our facility here. And they have been working on uh, the gun sites, the Mark 14 gun sites that go on the Mark 51 gun directories. So they've been taking them apart, scraping them down, getting all the loose flaky paint off, burying the paint, and then addressing the corrosion issues on them. And they've done a fantastic job of, of, of working on them. And over the next few weeks, those things will start getting completed as well. So we have lots of progress here. And in case you don't know, those Mark 14 gun sites, not only could they be mounted on a director, like the Mark 51, but they could also be mounted on the 20s themselves. So on Texas, uh, the only 20s that had Mark 14 gun sites were the, were the guns that were, were the mounts that were on turrets two, four, and the main mast. So there were four at the top of the main mast, and there were four on top of two of the clipping rooms underneath the main mast. And all of those guns, I think uh, off the top of my head, that's like 14 guns, they all had Mark 14 gun sights on them. And those gun sights are lead computing gun sights, kind of like uh, the gun sights in an, in, a, in an airplane. So when you see the little pipper, that's what they look like. Since the ship is not leaving for dry dock until quarter two of next year, we've decided to restart some of the projects that we, we stopped a few years ago. Uh, one of those projects is CIC. And, you know, from our CIC video, you notice it was, well, it was in pretty good shape. It was largely restored. Well, that's true. There's still a lot more work that needs to get done. And one of those things is, well, this SG range and train console. And if you watch that video, I pointed out where that, where this, this device set. And um, once it's restored, well, it'll go back in CIC. So the, the guys working on CIC right now, they're, they're working on finishing, touching up all the painting, getting the, pieces back where they should be and uh, we anticipate that that work will take us pretty much right up until we have to get the ship ready for well for the final tow prep and the other things that we have going on is the the navy's surge main unit that's based out of joint base ellington just right around the corner from where we're at right now they are coming out to work on getting the pilot house repainted and uh cleaned up and not only the pilot house but the bridge radio the captain's emergency cabin and the chart house and we're going to do a couple of other spaces as well with them and we're going to keep working with them all the way up through until the shipyard and potentially into the shipyard potentially and all of these things all these projects that we're kind of kind of we're kind of restarting is to make our lives easier after the shipyard so we want to be able to open the ship as quickly as we can once all the repairs are done so that period from the time that the ship goes back in the water until, well, we open to visitors, we wanna keep that period as short as possible, but we know there's gonna be some time to do that. So be patient with us when it comes to that time. We all wanna see the ship as, as spiffy as possible and we're gonna make that happen. We're excited to announce that Battleship Texas will be coming to Galveston, Texas, for repairs. Uh, Gulf Copper Shipyard right there has just acquired a floating dry dock of a sufficient size to handle Battleship Texas. Uh, we have been working with, with our partner, Valcor Energy Services, our project management engineering firm, and, and Gulf Copper uh, to help them acquire that dry dock over the, the last few months. And uh, we, we, are, we are very, very excited about this. Uh, so quarter two of next year, Battleship Texas will be sitting right there where that blue and white tugboat is sitting right there and uh, out of the water, getting ready for repairs. So what this means, for you folks that don't know where Galveston, Texas is, this is at the bottom of the Houston Ship Channel and San Jacinto is where the park ship's at now is much higher up the, the ship channel. It's about a 12 hour tow, about 40 miles down the channel from the where the ship's at now to the shipyard. By the, the dry dock and shipyard being so close to the ship, relatively speaking, it matches our project philosophy from, from beginning to end, which is to minimize the risk to the ship. We don't want to do things to the ship that are gonna increase the danger to the ship. So shipyard being close to, to San Jacinto makes it that much easier. Yeah, even though it's 40 miles away, 12 hour tow, all that stuff. That just means we get a fun ride and the ship's in, a, in um, um, protected waters. She's safe, there's plenty of places to pull off if there's an issue. So 
yes, we have a lot of work ahead of us to get us ready for quarter two of next year when the ship will be right there in Galveston, Texas at Gulf Copper Shipyard. Thank you all and have a good one. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We couldn't do what we do without the support of y'all.